Hey guys, what's up? Dingo Crikey here with another commentary video. This time I'm going to be discussing this year's New York Comic Con's recently revealed images of the upcoming Transformers Robots in Disguise figures. <laughs> So there were some other videos that I was planning on uploading this week, however, seems like every time we turn around there's another Comic Con going on, which certainly isn't a bad thing, but I just wanted to give a heads up to those of you who had suggested topics. There are some that I do still plan on doing, and thanks a lot for topic suggestions, keep them coming, but big news, especially figure news, does usually take priority. Though, usually robots in disguise figure reveals wouldn't really warrant it. Which brings me to the fact that I wanted to preface this video before getting into the figures by saying I usually don't take much of an interest in the robots in disguise toy line. I actually don't even own the majority of the figures, those of which I do own. Most will probably just stay in their boxes for either collecting or reselling purposes. To make it brief, I just don't think many of the robots in disguise figures look that quality, especially considering the only thing that I really think is worth buying from the line is probably the warrior class figures with the exception of some of the Legends class and One Step Changers when it comes to smaller characters such as Fix It and of course the Minicons as well. And I don't really think the line looks that interesting. Most of the figures have just been the main characters from the show and then they've kind of just been recycled through repaints and that kind of thing. On top of that, a lot of them are just Bumblebee and Optimus who we've been getting for countless lines since 2007. However, we did have some really interesting reveals at this year's New York Comic Con. Some characters who I really thought we would never see figures of. Most of you probably know which faction I am referring to, so I just wanted to get that out of the way to let you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of this line in general, however, I do think these ones are worth discussing. Without further ado, let's get into looking at the images. So first, let's look at the Minicon class figures. These really weren't the ones I had in mind. However, they were some of the reveals, so figured why not talk about them. And first we have one called Blue, which is kind of a curious name. Uh, some people don't seem to be that crazy about it. Eh, kind of like it. Kind of has a ghouly feel, which this figure definitely has the look of, with most blatantly the face right on the body, which is pretty cool looking. Nice detailing in there, though it's kind of lacking in some colors. As well, the shoulders kind of have that look with those little spikes sticking out, and then just the details all throughout the arms as well, and the head sculpt. I think a lot of the design choices for this guy were pretty cool, and they have a nice theme. The color scheme even isn't that bad. It's one we see for a lot of Decepticons in this line, but hey, they're trying to keep a theme with a lot of black and purple and darker colors for the cons. We haven't really had a strict separation of color scheme themes for the Autobots and Decepticons since maybe Transformers Energon, so I'm not really minding that. Main thing I'm really not liking is the lack of paint applications. But other than that, for Minicon, this guy looks pretty cool. Creative design going on. Then we have Minicon class Windstrike, who probably has even less going on in regards to colors. And I think in this guy's case, it really hurts just because he's blue and it really stands out for some reason. I do like the shade, however, he is very dull looking. As far as his details, they do have a consistent theme, especially in the shoulders, at lower arms, and in the legs, which is kind of cool. Definitely a different theme from the Decepticons, which, like I said, is cool to see. It is hurt by the really bland color scheme, as mentioned. And one thing I do gotta mention about this guy is I really don't like his head sculpt. I mean, look at that face. It looks as if he's going to transform into his dagger mode and kill you in your sleep. Not the first creepy face we've seen on Robots in Disguise promotion, but this one's definitely up there with some of the Bumblebee faces. 
I really don't know what they're going for with this new look. Anyways, has some cool detailing, but overall is pretty bland looking. Next, we move into the Warrior Class figures, beginning with Night Strike Bumblebee. And this is, once again, another repaint of Bumblebee. And this one doesn't really have that much different to it. The color scheme is primarily yellow and black, with the gray being turned into what looks to be a light blue color, though it can be hard to tell from some of these CG renders. And then he does have some black streaks going on throughout his body, which will probably be exemplified in the vehicle mode. It's something we've seen a lot, but I do kind of like this color scheme, the yellow with the light blue in particular. However, it's really not that different to warrant a buy, and it can't really help the mediocrity of the mold overall. The sword does look to be exceptionally shiny. Don't know if that's just a CG thing or not, but um, it's kind of cool looking. Then we have his car mode, which looks pretty much like the same thing as the regular Bumblebee, except the racing stripe pattern being changed and him having the black flames on the side. Um, despite having the flames, I actually think this looks more bland than the regular Bumblebee's vehicle mode. So, yeah, this guy's a definite pass for me. Next, we have another repaint, and that is Stealth Drift. However, this guy's actually pretty impressive looking. For one thing, his color scheme immediately catches the eye. Initially, I didn't recognize him as the same mold just because how different this color scheme is. Being they switched out his orange for the opposite of blue, it's a lot more interesting than the usual Bumblebee repaint we see. Other than that, it just looks nice. Different shades of blue all throughout, yet they mesh together pretty nicely, and he actually has a fair amount of paint applications. Uh, maybe I'm just becoming used to the lack of paint they usually have. However, I think this guy has enough to look adequate. The red on the crown looks pretty nice, though I'm sure some would argue it feels a little bit random. He does have the red on the Autobot symbol to kind of balance it out, but, you know, maybe he could have used some on other places of the body. Either way, I don't think it looks that bad. I think it's a good distinctive feature. Overall, I don't think Drift is a bad mold from Robots in Disguise, though he is pretty basic. However, this repaint might want to make me pick up the figure. In vehicle mode, he looks like he could be the clunky partner to animated blur, but that isn't a bad thing, as I think this color scheme looks really nice on this car mode. I would say it looks even more fitting than the original. Like how he has the red at the very front of the car to kind of mirror what's going on in robot mode. The silver streak paints also look pretty nice. Um, kind of a bland looking vehicle mode as the mold originally had it. But this color scheme does help it a lot. Next, moving on to Warrior Class Fracture. And this is where things get interesting because of course, we're finally getting some more Decepticons. Now prototype images of this guy had been leaked prior to this, but this is the first time we're seeing official in color images. And I gotta say, he's looking pretty good definitely has a good amount of show accuracy. As different with some of the other characters, they actually kept his overall sleek look. Instead of giving him a ton of kibble and that kind of stuff, that would weigh his appearance down. Overall, I think the look is pretty fabulous. He has a sleek, smooth look to certain parts of his body, and then it kind of transitions with the upper body into more of a spiky look, especially on the shoulders. His color scheme really complements itself in all different places, as he has a bunch of tidbits of red here and there, purple all throughout, of course, and then silver and black as well. He also looks to have a really nice amount of paint placement. The forearms do look pretty bare, but other than that, looks cool. Seems as though he'll have a lot of articulation, just the shoulders looking a little bit restricted, and then maybe the head. Looks as though he'll just kind of have a swivel there in the middle of his neck. I think that's kind of unfortunate because I think they could have still given him that big neck look, but just put a ball joint on his head as we've seen them done with previous figures, but this is Robots in Disguise. In this image, we do have him holding the Minicon Blue. 
I guess it's kind of cool. It looks like he has an evil Pac-Man on his hand. I um, guess that isn't a bad thing in itself, but his arm and the rest of him looks pretty skinny. I wouldn't be surprised if his arm just fell down when he lifted up the weapon. However, we do have another image here which shows him holding the weapon that will probably come with the figure instead, and I've got to say, I prefer the looks of this one. Despite the fact that the way he holds the weapon looks to be a little odd. I really like the looks of it. It has a realistic look, yet stays within the robots in disguise style. They also put the hole in the muzzle of the gun. That's pretty cool. And they painted with red the inside of those little circles on the side of the guns. That's a really nice touch. Overall, I think this figure looks pretty cool. But there is one detrimental problem here. And that is the price tag. I mean, I know Warrior slash Deluxe class figures are more expensive these days, but this guy looks as though he's going to be small even for a Robots in Disguise figure, which are already pretty dinky. I know I've already used Transformers Energon as an example, but seriously, those Scout class figures probably use more plastic than this guy's going to use. With saying that, by looking at these images, I would think of picking the figure up as its robot mode looks nice and then the vehicle mode also looks pretty cool. It's a little bit blocky in the body, however, it hides the robot mode convincingly enough and definitely looks like a better Cybertronian motorcycle mode than the one we got with the Minicon Deployer. Color scheme also looks nice in this mode. The different shades of purple probably blend together even better. Obviously, he has the touches of red all throughout and some black here and there. So even in vehicle mode, the look of this guy is really spot on. By the looks of these images, I think that Fracture has actually been given a pretty decent figure, so kudos to Hasbro there. Next, we have Megatronus, of whom we've already seen some pretty extensive images, but still talk about him anyways. At an initial glance, he does have a pretty show-accurate look, I would say. Colors, overall design, even the head sculpt does look pretty good. With saying that, I don't think he's a particularly exciting looking figure, primarily citing things such as the color scheme and the overall design. Looking at the colors first, um, he doesn't have bad paint application for an R.I.D. figure, however there are definitely some places in the chest that could probably use some additional paint applications, but it just kind of has a dull look, especially with a lot of the gray all throughout, and then sort of that blackish gray color we also have. Maybe Maybe it will be a darker black on the actual figure, but from these images, well, let's just say it's not particularly eye-catching. The overall design doesn't really help either. For one thing, it's very simplistic looking, and that is something we see a lot of in Robots in Disguise, but it isn't helped by the fact that he has an already kind of dull looking color scheme, and he looks exceptionally smooth, so we have this big, smooth, blocky looking figure. And maybe if he had a few more details, a little bit more structure throughout his design, he would be fine if he was maybe like a Voyager class, because he would sell that intimidation factor. However, this guy is a really dinky, hollow looking toy from these images, and you can really see that in the legs. From the front, they may initially look intimidating, but once you have that big hollow back to him, it just takes a lot away. Even on uh, the sides of the upper legs, we can uh, see what looks to be uh, just some hollow plastic. And this is a problem that seems to be recurring throughout the R.I.D. line and a lot of more recent Transformers figures just an overall unsubstantive look and feel to them. He really isn't helped in trying to sell an intimidating appearance with that dinky little weapon which looks more like a cyber spatula than, you know, something you could actually fight people with. Now, there are some pros to this figure. For one thing, he is show accurate as mentioned, but also it looks as though he'll have a pretty good amount of articulation. We can see a number of points of articulation in the leg, and it looks as though he may have waist swivel. Uh, not positive about that, but you know, that would be pretty cool. A lot of arm articulation going on there too head will hopefully be on a ball joint, and it doesn't look as though the articulation is going to be prohibited by a lot of kibble, so that's definitely a plus. Going with the lack of kibble, this guy does have a simplistic appearance which is kind of 
boring to look at. However, some of these more simplistic blocky figures can be funner when they're in hand, at least that has been my experience. So, I guess we'll have to see with this guy. I don't think he looks extraordinary, but he's not the worst thing that's come out of the line. Then, we have his tank mode. I guess I can give points for a kind of creative design, but this thing really doesn't sell the intimidation factor. It looks as though it would be fine if he were like a drone from Beast Machines, but as the main bad guy, this just really doesn't look that great. I'm betting this will be a pretty small scale vehicle. I do like some of the details in this mode, and the cannon in the front is kind of cool, but other than that, I can't really think of much positive to say. It just has a very bony, sort of skeletal look to it in an awkward design. Maybe seeing more images at different angles will change my mind, however, right now, yeah, this ain't too great looking. Next, we move on to Warrior Class Arctic Camo Optimus Prime. Yep, we're getting another Optimus, but this one's actually kind of cool looking. He has a color scheme that is similar to that of Stealth Drifts with a lot of blue, as he's supposed to have an Arctic camo, which altogether is something kind of cool because we don't really see it that often. And this figure looks to match that kind of vibe. The two primary colors being a lighter blue and then a darker dull blue look really nice together in my opinion. And then also on the really light gray on the upper legs and in the body just helps his color scheme flow together. Usually this is something that might look kind of dull, but I think it works. It also looks nice on this mold overall. He has a tough and more importantly cold look, which is something I feel as though this mold adequately deserved that not even Takara's Nemesis Prime pulled off this well. The legs do still look pretty bland, but he does have those streak-like details that the other figures have to give him some character down there. Then we have him fitted with Wind Strike in Sword Mode, which doesn't look all that effective to me considering the blade looks to be only like uh, one third of the entire sword. I mean, the rest of it does look kind of cool, but um, not that effective looking, but I guess it's cool to see them using the minicons like this, kind of a throwback to Armada you might say. Okay, then we have this other picture with him fitted with the weapon he probably will actually come with, that is of course the battle axe, and same thing as this figure always comes with, but it does mesh well with the rest of the color scheme. We can also see in this image his arms have some more paint apps as well, that's pretty cool. His color scheme doesn't look quite as cold here, that's a little disappointing, but I do really like these colors of blue they used, especially on his upper body. So now we move on to the truck mode. This doesn't look bad, but they needed some more gray to kind of fill that transition between the front of the truck and the back. But then again, you could say that the trailer and the front are supposed to look like, you know, two separate pieces. So, you know, maybe that makes it work out. Either way, I don't think it looks too bad, but probably not as good as some of the other renditions of this mold. Anyways, overall, I think this Arctic Optimus looks pretty good. It sells the Arctic camo, and it's a nice change for Optimus. Might actually think of picking this one up if it's on clearance or something. Then we move on to Warrior Class Quillfire, and this was a big shocker to me. I had no idea we would actually be getting this character in figure form. I actually figured he was probably one of the least likely ones out of the Decepticons in the show. However, I thought his design looked as though it would be really cool to put in figure form, and seeing these images, I'm still really excited about it. I mean, right off the bat, you can recognize this as his show counterpart, but he's also uniquely looking. He's not as humanoid as some of the other characters, though he does have the basic proportions. They're a lot more um, dwarfed down, I guess you could say, with uh, the smaller legs. Well, his arms are kind of long, but it does look pretty cool. And then obviously the head sculpt is quite different. In this case, he doesn't only have a more animal looking head sculpt as Steeljaw has, but he also has that whole crazy design for that giant neck piece, which gives him a nice hunchback appearance. Now, I doubt he'll actually have the quills that he had in the show, which is a little disappointing, but I'm not complaining too much. It does look pretty good so far. 
he does have a little pistol blaster to make up for it. It's a cool design for the gun. You know, they have uh, points on the edges there, I guess, to kind of symbolize his special ability. So that's kind of cool. As far as other gimmicks and features, it looks as though his bottom jaw will be able to close up and down. That should definitely make the figure a lot more fun. The color scheme is also a pro for this guy. Not only is it unique, but it looks really nice on this mold and fits with the kind of clunky, short, stocky look. With the color scheme, scheme, this guy sort of looks like a mutated version of G1 Outback, which is pretty cool considering we haven't gotten a figure of that guy in a while. The only thing I don't really like as far as the colors go is that his lower legs and his arms look a little bit barren. However, I don't know if it's just bias, but I don't think it actually looks too bad on this guy. Maybe he could have used some extra stuff. But I think the paint applications he already has, along with the different tones of brown, help give him enough life that he doesn't necessarily need them. As far as the articulation, it looks as though this guy will have a pretty good amount, even considering his awkward head. It looks as though there may be a swivel back and forth on that big neck, that would be cool, and his head should be able to go up and down, but I don't want to say for sure, that definitely would be cool, but I guess we'll have to see. Already mentioned the movable jaw. As far as the arms and legs, looks like a pretty standard amount, maybe the upper arms slash shoulder area will be a little bit prohibited. A downside of the lower legs is that since they're so stocky, he probably will kind of have a uh, weird articulation down there, just being he won't be able to do things like sit and uh, get extensive poses. But, you know, I think it's a sacrifice I can make for the design. As far as other cons, it's just the problems that, you know, these guys usually have being uh, a lot smaller than they probably should be. And even more so with this guy, the hollowness, it looks as though he has that problem in his legs and his arms. They're very visible in ar his arms on this picture. It looks as though he probably could have been helped a little bit by more complex transformation as maybe you would have been able to fold in the car windows in the arms and give them more of a condensed appearance. Also, some of the car parts on the sides of the lower legs probably could have been helped. But really, those are the only cons I can find with this guy, which are the typical cons we can expect for a Robots in Disguise figure. Other than that, I think he looks to be one of the most exciting we've gotten and a character I really did not expect expect to see in figure form. So before we wrap things up though, let's take a look at the vehicle mode. A uh, pretty standard clunky looking robots in disguise vehicle, but it's really cool looking. Kind of helps sell that outback look that his robot mode has, and it fits with the personality of his robot mode. Paint applications look adequate in this mode, and they even took the time to give him some paint on the wheels, and even the inside of the wheels are colored differently. So that's definitely cool to see. The front of the car looks nice. Can't really think of any problems in this mode. Overall, I think this figure just looks great. Really excited about picking him up. Then we move on to the last of the New York Comic Con reveals, and was probably one of the most anticipated, and that is Warrior Class Thunderhoof. Now, this is one that me and a lot of other people had probably been anticipating, considering Thunderhoof has so far been a pretty cool character in the show. However, I'm not too happy with this Warrior Class figure. Now, I don't want to say it looks totally bad, because it definitely has pros, but I just don't think it captures Thunderhoof as well as, well, actually some of the smaller versions of the character did, namely in the upper body and the head. In the show, he's supposed to kind of have a buff look to his upper body, especially in the chest area, and kind of a skinnier torso. And then his head's supposed to be on a bigger neck and kind of stick out forward. It looks as though they just swapped out those two parts of his show body to give him a standard look, which is pretty disappointing. His body just has a flat, simple look to it, doesn't give a tough guy persona, and in the proportion with the rest of his body, just doesn't look all that intimidating. The head design also feels really different looking and doesn't have nearly as much character. I really don't like the way they pulled off the whole rack horn feature here. It just looks kind of awkward and crammed in there. I can't help but think it was done better on some of the smaller versions of the figure, which is 
definitely kind of disappointing. So in those areas, I think this figure has cons. It might also suffer from the fact that it seems to be lacking in paint application. Now, I do like the color scheme overall, but maybe he could have used a few things here and there to jazz him up a little bit. Nevertheless, I should mention that while blue and black together can look kind of bland, they added the tidbits of red throughout to kind of balance it and give some nice contrast, so I do appreciate that. His leg design also looks really cool to me. Now, from the sides and from the back, I'm sure it will look kind of generic as a lot of the figures kind of do in that area. However, from the front, they do have a cool look and they sell that um, kind of hooved animal-like appearance. So that's pretty cool. Arm design is okay, a little bit clunky looking, but not complaining too much. Mainly, I just don't like the hollow inside of the arm. The blaster also has a really cool look. It kind of mirrors that of Fracture's weapon, which is nice to see that they're giving the Decepticons their own distinct look. At least, um, you know, Steel Jaws pack. Overall, it looks like this guy should be pretty good in regards to articulation, though I'm sure the head and the rack will prohibit some stuff, but, um, you know, kind of expected that. At an initial glance, I would say this robot mode looks pretty cool. However, knowing it's Thunderhoof, it just feels as though they really dumbed down and simplified his show counterpart, and that is pretty disappointing considering how cool he is in the show. Next we move on to his vehicle mode which looks like a chibi truck rake type thingamajig and I do enjoy this vehicle mode. It isn't really all that intimidating looking but it's pretty cool. Looks as though they pulled off the whole rake gimmick with the head pretty well. Doesn't look all that too obvious and the rest of the vehicle mode looks nice and compact. The colors are spread all throughout nicely. The wheels do look a little bit bland but really that's all I'm going to complain about here. I really like the looks of this vehicle mode. Overall though, the figure is a little bit disappointing just because I was expecting something a little bit more imposing and closer to his show counterpart, but nevertheless I am excited that we're getting a warrior class Thunderhoof figure and I'm going to have to consider buying Steeljaw now because so many of these Decepticons look really cool so I might want to get the entire pack. But anyways, that sums up my coverage of these figures. If you guys have your own thoughts on them, you can drop them off in the comment section below. Are you excited to see a lot of the Decepticons in warrior class form? Or maybe you're pretty disappointed with how they turned out. And what do you think of the repaints we're getting? As I'm actually kind of impressed with them, despite not liking some of the original molds. Along with your thoughts on this video, feel free to drop off topic suggestions for future videos like this. It could be talking about figures, or it could be talking about the movies, or the Robots in Disguise cartoon, whatever it might be. I'm also going to do a coverage of the New York Comic Con Titans Return figures, so stay tuned for that, along with more Transformers videos in general. If you're interested in checking out previous videos such as this one, you can go to my channel and sort through them all, or you can go to my playlist where I have them in a more organized view. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this one. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for more Transformers news and commentary, and have a good one guys, I'll see you soon.